Good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope you are doing good. Uh, today, I will be talking about uh, an existential analysis between a clock, uh, orange, and Edward Caesar hands. If you're ready and have coffee, let's get started. Here we have our content chart. We will be talking about the meaning of existentialism, its role in movies, the director's effects on movies, Stanley Kubrick and Tim Burton, existentialism topics, the relationship between existentialism and the movies, uh, thesis statement, my own thesis statement, three compare, uh, three compare and contrast examples from the movie, uh, my personal ideas about the comparison and the conclusion part. Firstly, we start with the existentialism. Um, it's a philosophical movement that has been going on uh, since 20th century, which is based on people's self-destination to themselves. Uh, thanks to this moment, we are able to observe and understand each individual's free will, their acts, their definition of freedom and responsibilities, their beliefs towards the God and death, their choices and reasons, their social interaction with the other people. Uh, according to this, this moment of existentialism, human lives are not only created for a um, certain purpose or meaning, it is based on the value that human created for themselves. Existentialism role in movies. In order to um, call a movie as existential, it should include these topics, loneliness and question about the universe and society, justice and rule of the life, struggling to find yourself in the universe, people's choices and results, religion and truth. Uh, existentialism makes us aware of human um, of being human is sometimes things that we forget, especially when we uh, realize it in movies. It teaches us how to replace ourselves with uh, the others and also show different perspectives through others' lives, livings, and paths. The sh question here should be asked is society, is society the one who determines our choices or is it us? Uh, the director's effects. The directors are actually the ones who shape the movies that we watch, um, rather than the movie stars' actings and their like costumes and their uh, gestures. Director has the control of showing the details as they want us to recognize during the creation phase of the movies. Therefore, the director's life views are very precious while watching the, and criticizing the movies that they directed. First director, Stanley Kubrick. Stanley is one of those who didn't. Who thought uh, the life worth living when you know how to cope up with the um, morality? He supports his ideas with saying um, the meaningless of life forces men to create his own in an um, interview of Playboy. Uh, men are the reverse, unlike the children who have infinite wonder about life since they were born. And every people face with this reality and of meaningless, meaninglessness as they grew up. According to him, we should not try to find the meaning in life. We have to create our meanings. We have to go for it. Also, when you take a look at his films, the UC incomplete scenes at the final, middle, and beginning, he wants us to play the role of God to decide on uh, the characters' paths and their endings. He's an interesting guy, yes. Uh, Tim Burton. At Tim Burton's movies, it can be seen that main characters' identities are origi originated and influenced by society. Also, um, uh, the idea of the self as a narrator is always underlined. He focused on existential dread, um, naturalistic and theatrical sides in his movies to indicate the contrast of the world. Uh, likewise, in Edward Caesar's hands, he focused on the gothic and the colorful themes at the same time, like the dress of uh, Edward and the colorful houses and uh, wandering uh, acts of the people. And also he focused on, uh, at the same time, the acceptance of the society and social exclusion, which made us to question um, or about our existence. Here are some topics of existentialism. First, the individual. Individual, that always a uh, question about right and wrong uh, during their lives, their paths, choices by which we are always affected and considered whether they are right or wrong. Uh, anxiety, the fear of non-existing, thinking of the end, the death, the loss of the loss of that, uh, the bloat ones, trigger anxiety. Meaning and absurdity, absurdity. Uh, they are the related uh, with humans past and the way they act in the opposite ways. 
Odin City uh, is a key of accepting your own with facing up reality rather than fighting with things uh, like religion, morality, or science, or society. Uh, social criticism involves in some behaviors of fear, ignorance caused by so society's criticism. Uh, personal relations. Uh, they include um, being an individual in a community of people that you care or you're or either you care, you care or you're scared to get banished. Religion, actually, it is um, one of the keys that is seen as uh, suspicious in existentialism due to the fact that it is seen as unrealistic and um, decider for humans free will. So uh, there are some exist uh, some thinkers in existentialism who accept this idea and not. Uh, we have to talk about the relationship between existentialism and the movies. Firstly, we start with Edward Caesarhands. In order to make commentaries about existentialism, we have to take uh, take a closer look to each film. Uh, uh, at the movie Edward Caesarhands, we can see that life for him is only suffering uh, that you can see at the photos and uh, taking responsibilities every, every day, each of which has a negative consequences and cause anxiety. Uh, life for him was unbearable since he lost the only since he lost the only person, his creator, who knew him. He suffered because of the results of being different by the behaviors of the people in town, also loving the daughter of the family who has a boyfriend and getting blamed by her boyfriend in society where, uh, where all the fire stars of his suffering and loneliness. Uh, those made him feel as, um, as if he doesn't fit well with the society and uh, as if he's not the one who determines about the decision and exists of a group of people. So he felt so lonely in this lonely world of society. The next one is a Clockwork Orange. Uh, at the first sight, we bump into a lot of violence and rape scenes. However, the message and related existentialism is a bit different than being only about crime. It is based on Alex's journey to find his existential satisfaction by raping, destroying everything until he gets caught by police. In addition, uh, we see the people who got hurt by him as innocent, yet this is an, another miracle of the director uh, wanted us to show us. After having spent uh, his time in jail, he accepts the medication or treatment offered to, uh, in order to be set free, to continue his existence at the outside. The doctors and the therapists disregard his free will by using illegal and uncertified uh, methods to prove their achievements, which also affected uh, governmental issues. He endures all of this and bump into the people whom he ca caused pain. Moreover, um, we see the devil inside of these people who seemed very innocent at the first scenes. You have to remember or uh, realize if you ever watched this film. Uh, so we're, um, we see uh, his good intentions to fail because of the evil intentions of the good people. And also because of the karma also. As a result, the movie wants, us, wants to indicate us each person's writing, rights to having free will, even if they may cause damage a lot or in spite of the governments and life smoking and ironic attitudes. Here is my thesis statement that I would like to share with you. Uh, but in the movies, the characters experience existential crises which lead them act out in abnormal and violent ways um, furthermore, the society, uh, societal standards, expectations, and criticism have a large impact on how we behave. This leads us to the question, what pushes us to act out in abnormal ways, society's expectations, or, um, or an individual's character? This is the question should be asked to everyone else. I would like to show you my three examples of compare and contrast things. Firstly, uh, we start with lack of awareness as an individual. Firstly, I would like to start with Alex. He dedicated his acts and choices uh, to his violence with destroying people's lives and leaving them unforgettable memories. Therefore, uh, with his gang, obviously, therefore he couldn't fulfill his existence in a healthy way by destroying and hurting people. And when we look at Edward, actually he couldn't fulfill his existence in a sane way neither uh, because he denied his existence with hiding himself and denying himself because his accent tended to be escaping from the reality and the death of, uh, because of the death of his creator. So he was so scared to show himself and to be in society. So he couldn't fulfill his existence. 
The second fact, government's disregard for the character's existence. When we look at both of them, he will, uh, for example, Alex, he was only seen as a person who believed, uh, who believes old man and rapes women. Thus, he was sent to jail after being beaten up during um, officer questionings. The reason behind his acts are never asked, though he might be have, having existential crisis. He was never asked. So um, Edward was never asked neither. Like he was never asked. Without getting questions, he was sent to the jail after Kim's boyfriend's uh, putting blame the blame on him. The truth is never asked. A research by the officers, by both of them, or uh, in Halsey, there were never questions. So Edward's free will and rights of his existence were never revealed by the dis disregardful government. I'm so sad because nowadays the things are not the difference. The third stuff, the characters desire to prove their innocence. Alex, for example. After uh, the end of his medical treatment, Alex learned a lesson. During the time he spent, he was there, he, which made him kind of disrespectful uh, towards the others, a uh, right to live, until he gets tortured by Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. Before the torture, he fulfilled his existence by treating people nice and um, being a good man. Edwards, he tries so hard to not hurt anyone else in spite of the bad behaviors of society because of the blame that he was put on and in order to keep his beloved one's existence alive he had to kill the one who who does not respect their lives uh kim's boyfriend yeah and we have three uh contrast examples from the movies the first one is the ways of existential satisfaction and joy um alex when we look at the photos he was bullying, raping, beating people uh, just for joy and his satisfaction uh, to complete his existential satisfaction, even though he couldn't fulfill before getting a treat uh, before getting treatment. So his his way was too violent. Edward, when we look at him, even though he didn't have any um, like his existential satisfaction after the death of his creator, he never hurt anyone else. He was different than Alex. He was not. He didn't choose any violent ways. Um, so he never went out of his castle for, uh, for scaring people since he was dealing with his existential crisis. Second fact, societies act at a first glance until, um, Alex, until it, it is realized that, uh, he could play a big role in, at politics. Society's criticism was based on hatred towards him after bullying people and killing a woman. He didn't have a choice to reject all of the treatment and play good role in politics and for someone else, for someone's good reasons. When we look at Albert, actually society's criticism on him was getting surprised because of his scissor hands and people did not marginalize him, even they liked him a lot, even though there was um, nothing bad or hateful act, apparently people abused his talents with his, uh, with disregarding uh, his own free will, whether he wants to help people or not. So that's the problem. And the last fact, the beloved one's attitude towards the main characters. Alex, for example, he loved his family. At first we can see that, but his family, after uh, he's coming back to his house, like he removed him from the house and uh, rented his, house, rented his uh, room for another, for a guy for two years and said that, he had no place here, which is awful. But on the other hand, Edward, actually, we, we have to talk about Pack, the woman who owned him into her house, and her husband and her daughter and her son always supported and accepted him as he was. Uh, and he, they all supported his existential journey without questioning, which is beautiful and contrasting. Uh, my, I would like to share my personalities. Um, the movie shows a lot of features of metaphors, similarities, and allusions in view of existentialism. They show us uh, how, um, like, how to be your own in a society you don't feel like you belong. During their journeys of finding and becoming themselves, they face with lots of reactions by society. Some of them are fear, acceptance, abusing good intentions, um, hatred, and violence. Though the both characters were um, in the same journey, their paths were so unique and 
to it than each other. At first, I thought the characters were like the side of a coin, like head and tail. The two directors of the movies are one of the best amongst their jobs. Like thanks to their brilliant talent of directing movies, we put ourselves in the characters' shoes and felt the same as they did. Also, the details in those movies made me question about my place in the society and alternative my uh, ways of my future version, obviously. And my conclusion part, uh, the movies, like the two movies, The Clockwork Orange and Edward Scissor Hands, have shown that each individual's past have a huge impact on their path of growing and acting. The feeling of love and empathy could change for one um, and then for the whole society or existence relies on each individual's sanity and happiness and each individual's existence get affected by society. Thus, one should not forget that if an individual changes, the society changes as well. Thank you for listening to me.